Yeah, it's wrong. All right, cool. Uh, so you guys are from Brooklyn, right? It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got that mixed up. Really. Yeah. Um, what, uh, for me personally, I've been listening to a lot of bands like from Brooklyn. I, I think it's a pretty awesome scene. What do you guys? Are you guys involved with that? Are you guys kind of your own thing? Like, what do you guys think about the Brooklyn scene? It's pretty, pretty big. Yeah. Pretty, pretty yeah. Big. Is it? It's it's a pro, it's like you know it's it's sort of uh, small fish in a big pond kind of there's oh, there's tons of bands I mean we while on the road we'll frequently get oh you know I'm really into like X band right right right, right. Uh, they're from Brooklyn have you guys heard of them and a lot of times the answer is no yeah, yeah. but that's, it that's is cool that there's so much going that. on and, and so many opportunities to play. I mean they're they're really I mean you know that being said there there really isn't any one Brooklyn scene there. Yeah. I mean, it so, definitely sound-wise, it seems like it's yeah. across the board. I just thought I was just curious how that works. It's totally. It's I mean, you get paired up with a lot of, you know, when you're playing Brooklyn clubs and so on, you get paired up with a bunch of different bands um, uh, from the same area. And, you know, right. we know a good amount of people from playing music cool. just in the city for a long time. Right. Um, but, yeah, there's it's a big range. Cool. Um, you guys want to talk about the process you guys go through to write songs? How does that work? <laughs> sure. I mean, I mean, yeah. I guess it, I mean, no, it's, it's length. First of all, it's long and arduous. <laughs> yeah. uh, we actually, um, we were on tour for February and March, and our plan was to come back in April. And the way songs work is I will have um, most of or some of a song um, with some, you know, a, sort of like a sketch of a chord progression. Um, a chorus, usually no words for the verse but a melody, um, just a, a few ideas for different sections and then we'll come in and uh, like I'll have some ideas of how I want the big picture to sound and we'll try out different drum parts and different bass parts and different guitar parts. Um, the idea was when we came back from the tour that we wanted to arrange a, a whole bunch of songs. I had like four or five that we wanted to do. But we had a specific goal in mind this time. Um, which was to sort of give things a little bit more of a backbeat than we've had in the past without resorting to typical sort of like dance rock cliches because um, uh, I mean it's, that wasn't really what we were interested in um, but uh, but we wanted to still sort of make you want to dance, like really dance. So uh, it ended up, because that was such a foreign process to us, uh, it ended up we worked on two songs for the whole month, and we only finished one of them, which we are still basically sort of tweaking as we play it at the live show. So, uh, Losers! Yeah. So, yeah. But it was more, I mean, it's more than just learning a song, it was learning sort of a whole new way to write and arrange. I mean, because right. the arrangement process, I think the thing with the dance rock stuff that I was talking about is that it was sort of people taking um, a rock song and putting a dance beat under it. Right. Uh, which right. just is not like when you listen to something that is actually very danceable, that's not what it is. It's not just like a song with a beat under it, it's how all the components fit together. Yeah. And right. Trying to get in that kind of mindset is hard. A lot of it was trying to figure out just like what, like what doesn't work and you know in right. addition to like what does. Um, and the, the window of what does work is pretty small. <laughs> I mean, we didn't want it to all of a sudden, small. We didn't want to all of a sudden be that here we are with new songs and now we sound like we're like, you know, Justin Timberlake. Like that would sort of not be where we wanted to head. But at the same time, like uh, you know, Justin Timberlake makes me want to dance more than other things. So how do we like take the like groove aspects of that right. and uh, with, without just all of a sudden having uh, sort of the simplicity of a lot of those right. songs. So sort of keeping the complexity of the production, but also keeping um, a little more depth and complexity to the songwriting itself. And it ends up being tough. Well, I mean, and also with acoustic instruments. You're just yeah, dealing with the right. whole, you're like, you're dealing with a different alphabet even. Right. Pretty cool. It's an so, entirely, entirely different sort of sonic range when you don't have like a precise like digital snare hit and you have, you know, a real acoustic snare and, you know, you don't have the huge like, <laughs> like yeah. the bass sound, you've got like a real bass, you know, it's, it's, it's a very different thing. Um, so it's tough, but uh, we're, I would say we're, we're way we're more on our yeah. way than we were yeah. when we first started. So you guys are recording then another full length? or We're doing a three song EP, EP. Um, okay. uh, when we get back, actually, that's probably going to be okay. self-released sometime in the middle of June. Yeah. Um, then we're looking at doing another one at the end of the summer, maybe September release. Cool. Yeah, so we're going to try and keep on doing the, uh, like a few songs at a time. I mean. At this point, um, when we're not tied to a label, 
uh, which is both negative and positive. Um, uh, there's not really any reason for us to, to uh, feel tied to like a full length right, release. Right. Um, we can digitally release things. And that's release I mean, that's kind of something I, I, that actually I've, I've been talking about on my blog lately. The, the concept of like EP or like you know just being able to put out Songs, whatever yeah. type of thing you want to do, really. Right. And I guess this is my question I like to ask everyone, like, what are your thoughts right now on the state of music and the music industry and, like, your perspective on it? What's your take? Well, how do you feel about it? Uh, I mean, I think right now it's sort of funny. I think it's really exciting because, uh, I mean, our biggest break thus far has been that we released a music video on YouTube last year that, that did well, and we'd been a band for a while before that, and it was tough to sort of get our head above the water, and we released the video, and it was getting thousands of hits, and like it just brought us straight up to another level, and YouTube didn't even exist a few years ago. Right. So like the idea yeah. that you can basically make a career out of something that literally didn't even exist a short while ago is remarkable. And right. the fact that we can do things like these small releases and digital releases and um, keep the buzz going that way without having a label and still be making progress instead of just stalling waiting to get a deal um, is great. On the flip side, it's pretty frightening to be a band right now because even the labels don't have a model right now for what they're going to be working with. In the, and the old no, model used to allow sort of, I don't know, um, well, if, you were, if you're headed toward the, the major deal, um, right. used to allow you sort of a lot, I mean a lot of money, which allows you a lot of time to, to either write or record and, and, and I don't know that it, doesn't happen as much, you know, or it certainly isn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> we had, we had, uh, after this music video thing, we had uh, uh, a bunch of different people come and talk to us. Now, you know, we have like a booking agent, we've got lawyer, we've got um, uh, press people, which is awesome. Uh, we also talked to several labels. They came and talked to us after this came out. And there was, for example, one indie label that we talked to. Which now no longer exists. This is eight months ago. <laughs> and a major label and its subsidiary. Uh, and its subsidiary no longer exists. Yes, they dropped the subsidiary. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, both of those were and the label uh, basically label the manager at the major is now gone. So like that was actually that was sort of the interesting. Was the whole the whole thing just like, dropped apart. You know, in in eight months since we got sort of semi offers from those were actually the two that we actually sort of had. Relationships, offers yeah. and yeah. relationships with, uh, you know, we hadn't dug into specifics because we were sort of holding off on doing anything along those lines yet, and then they both just fell apart. So yeah. it's terrifying. It's like yeah. if we do sign with someone, then you know, is it going to fall apart in like two months after right. we do it? Which is what would have happened if we, you know, if they had actually wanted us and we had actually signed up with them. But so oh, that's interesting. I guess uh, I'll leave it a uh, little lighter thing. You guys have just been touring a lot. Um, do you guys have any interesting or funny stories as some of this happens in the road? Or has it been pretty. We always uh, actually sort of joke about this um, uh, because when we when we got back from the tour, everyone was like, "Oh man, like tell me all your crazy yeah, stories." Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I can sum up just about every single day of the tour like this. Uh, we would wake up at like nine or ten in the morning drive anywhere from six to nine hours, show up in a, a city we'd never been in, unload our gear, uh, sound check, eat dinner, watch a band, play, watch another band while we sort of slept in the corner because we were tired, got paid, found a Motel 6, and called it a night. <laughs> so, nice. Like 35 they included days like that. once in a while, we stop on the side of the highway to take a piss or throw a football. Yeah. <laughs> those, were the, those were pretty good. Yeah. Uh, wild moment. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah that, that was it. The, the wildest stuff happened as a result of our van sort of crapping out on us, but uh, no, yeah, we're, we are pretty boring people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was it. Play our show, go to bed. We're a wild bunch of guys. Uh, you got anything? Well, I was going to ask what the song you were playing was all about, but you covered a song, so I'm not going to ask that. So I'd rather actually have you debunk the myth for me. Uh, Mark Summers. Uh, <laughs> I heard that he actually carries around a locket full of slime that's blessed by an Indonesian shaman. <laughs> true. And, uh, true. True. Hundred percent true. true, huh? Hundred percent. Absolutely. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And then also, uh, what do you guys think about Wonder Root? 
It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really cool. It's amazing. It's, it's like, an amazing facility. Yeah. It's awesome to have, uh, I don't know, I feel like in, in a lot of places all the different art disciplines are split up. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's a music place, there's a visual art place, and they don't cross. But uh, it's great to have a facility that pulls it all together. Bottom line is I'm, I'm really jealous and I want to move to Atlanta. I'm actually, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, you guys are, I mean, obviously not for profit. Yeah. Um, and are, have pretty slick gear all over the place, which is awesome. Thanks to that. Thanks to that. Did you get the money? Did you steal <laughs> that? Yeah. Uh, no, nah, just, just sold heroin. Just nice. sold, yeah, heroin. It's good. Just sold heroin. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's, <laughs> it's not for profit. Yeah, it's actually all, yeah, just private donation. That's great. From Stephen Hurl.